Hutchinson-Guilford progeria syndrome, also known as HGPS, is a rare genetic disorder that causes children to age rapidly. To keep things simple in our webinar, we'll just call it progeria. Hi there, I'm Alex. These are my classmates, Anthea and Yezra. We are master's students at the University of Toronto studying medical genomics. We'd like to welcome you to our webinar on progeria. We'll unwrap the genetics of this disease and its effects on cell division. Here's an overview of what we'll talk about in our webinar. First, we'll provide some information on progeria for context. Then, we'll review what you may have already learned in class about DNA. With a DNA review under our belt, we can then move on to gene function and dysfunction in progeria, followed by downstream consequences such as cell defects. Lastly, we'll go over possible treatments for progeria. The symptoms of this disease start in the first two years of life and get worse with age. The average life expectancy for a person with progeria is 13 years. However, if disease severity is mild, some individuals with progeria could live for 20 or more years. Progeria affects 1 in 20 million people. To put that into context, roughly 400 people are living with the condition worldwide today. Some physical features of progeria include stunted growth with small stature, narrowed face with a small lower jaw, thin lips, and a beak nose. It also includes hair loss, thin wrinkled skin with visible veins, and a high-pitched voice. Some physiological features include hearing loss, delayed and abnormal tooth formation, severe progressive heart and blood vessel disease, loss of fat and muscle mass, fragile bones, and stiff joints. Doctors may suspect progeria based on some of the physical and physiological features previously mentioned. This rare disorder is caused by mutations in the LMNA gene. A genetic test for LMNA mutations can confirm the diagnosis of progeria. This mutation creates a defective protein called progerin, which makes cells unstable and can cause rapid aging. Progeria is autosomal dominant. This means you only need one mutated gene copy to cause disease. Meanwhile, an unaffected person will have two unaltered copies of the LMNA gene. Before we can dive deeper into the molecular mysteries of progeria, let's review the basics of DNA. So what is DNA? DNA is the blueprint that contains all the instructions for a person to grow and develop. It is stored safely in the nucleus of the cell. DNA stores so much information, such as your hair color, your eye color, your blood type, or even your chance to develop allergies. If you stretch the DNA from one of your cells, it would be three meters long. That's the size of a full-grown grizzly bear. To make all that DNA fit in your cell, it is important for DNA to be tightly coiled as chromatin, which can then form into 3D structures known as chromosomes. Each cell holds 46 chromosomes. That's a lot of DNA. And to think that all DNA sequences are made up of just four types of nucleotides, adenines, thymines, cytosines, and guanines. The A's are complementary with the T's, and the G's are complementary with the C's. Sometimes, a nucleotide can be switched out. This is called a point mutation. For example, in 90% of progeria cases, a cytosine is switched to a thymine. This mutation can happen completely randomly, during fetal cell division. Now that we have covered our bases, no pun intended, let's talk about what really goes wrong in the LMNA gene to cause progeria. Anthea will now explain the genetics of progeria. As Alex had mentioned, progeria is caused by defects in the LMNA gene. This gene is located on chromosome 1. The enzyme RNA polymerase uses the LMNA gene as a template to create messenger RNA that will be later transcribed into lamin proteins. The LMNA gene has 12 exons. Remember, a gene is made up of exons and introns. When making DNA into RNA, the introns of a gene are spliced out, and the remaining exons are glued together. The RNA contains only the gene's exonic sequences. The LMNA gene can create two major protein products, lamin A and lamin C, through alternative splicing. Alternative splicing is a method cells use to create many proteins from the same gene. For example, the lamin A transcript contains all 12 exons, whereas the lamin C transcript only contains the first 10 exons. 
These transcripts will go on to produce lamin A and lamin C proteins. Let's look at the consequences of the C to T mutation in the LMNA gene and what this means for the RNA transcript in people with progeria. This mutation occurs in exon 11. Let's zoom into this part of the gene. Normally, the introns will be spliced out and the end of exon 11 will be connected to the beginning of exon 12. In progeria, the C to T mutation creates an accidental splice site in exon 11. Instead of being spliced at the end of exon 11, it's spliced earlier on. This deletes 150 base pairs from exon 11. This deletion results in a slightly shorter messenger RNA compared to the normal laminate transcript. When this RNA is transcribed by the ribosome, it creates a protein called progerin instead of the laminate protein. Compared to lamin A, progerin is missing 50 important amino acids, which can cause serious downstream effects for the cell. Since lamin C contains only the first 10 exons and not exon 11, it remains unaffected by this C to T mutation. Now, let's switch gears to understand the life cycle of a cell and what happens when progerin accumulates in the nucleus. In unaffected individuals, lamin proteins are found in the nucleus of all cells, such as heart cells, skin cells, muscle cells, and even stem cells. As we grow and develop, our cells are continually dividing. Naturally, cells get older as they perform their functions and go through multiple rounds of division. Older cells in your body can remain in a state of senescence where they stop dividing but continue to perform some functions, or they are destroyed through cell death and replaced by newer cells. In progeria, cells get older a lot faster than in unaffected individuals. Now, Yashra will explore why this happens. As we know, lamin plays an important role in the nucleus. But what exactly are these roles? First, it helps package DNA into chromatin structures which further get processed into chromosomes. Lamins also bind to proteins that assist with DNA replication, as well as proteins that are involved with DNA damage repair. Both of these protein types help to regulate the cell cycle. Lamin's presence in the nuclear envelope helps maintain and stabilize the structure of the nucleus. It is also important for nuclear envelope disassembly. During the early stages of cell division, lamin detaches from the nuclear membrane, allowing it to break down and prepare for later stages. I will now explain what happens to the cell when progerin accumulates in the nucleus. Let's start by looking at where lamin proteins live in the cell. When we zoom into the nucleus, we can see that DNA is tightly coiled into chromatin. The nuclear envelope is the membrane that separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm. In individuals who aren't affected by progeria, lamin A forms the nuclear lamina, which is a supportive mesh that sits under the nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope and the lamina work together to keep the nucleus supported and the DNA safely stored. People with progeria have more progerin than lamin. Progerin displaces lamin from the nuclear lamina, which destabilizes the nuclear envelope. This affects the nuclear shape, making it stiff and fragile. Check out this microscopic view of the nucleus. This is what the nucleus of an unaffected person looks like. You can see that the nucleus is spherical in shape. Now, look at the nucleus in a person with progeria. You can see that it is destabilized and misshapen. This destabilized nucleus is really bad for the cell because it can lead to lots of DNA damage. Usually, DNA damage is repaired by DNA repair proteins. In unaffected cells, DNA repair proteins are recruited into the nucleus. These repair proteins move along the DNA, correcting any damages that might have occurred during replication and transcription. Let's look at what happens in progeria. The repair proteins cannot move along the DNA to correct any damages. You might wonder why. Scientists have done some research and found that progerin holds on to DNA repair proteins, which prevents them from interacting with the DNA. This along with other factors involved in cell division, cause more DNA damage to accumulate, eventually leading to cellular stress. 
These signals cause the cell to stop dividing and eventually enter a state of premature senescence. The cell lives, but it is not actively dividing. During this period, the cell accumulates even more mutations due to the impaired DNA repair system. Because these cells have a lot of progerin, they remain in a senescent state. That is why people with a disease develop features that make them look older and age faster. There is currently no cure for progeria. For many patients, all they can do is manage their symptoms. Patients with progeria and their families receive medical counseling to help them understand their condition and to inform them of treatment strategies. Some of these strategies include a specific diet to help with growth deficiencies, the use of hearing aids, prescribed medication to treat things like heart problems, frequent use of sunscreen to protect your skin, and orthopedic management to help with hip and muscle problems. Recently, a new treatment called Bonafarne immunotherapy is undergoing human clinical trials for treating progeria. This therapy prevents progerin from accumulating in the membrane of the nucleus. In patients who took the drug, there was improvement in their lifespan. They also developed stronger bones, healthier weight, better blood circulation, and better hearing. There is still so much we don't know about progeria. Researchers are currently studying the biological mechanisms of the progerin protein in order to understand why cells age so quickly. As scientists conduct more research, they will come up with better treatments and hopefully a cure for this disease. Thanks for all those explanations, Anthea and Yajra. That brings us to the end of our webinar. We hope that a disease like progeria shows you how different concepts like genetic mutations, alternative splicing, and cell division all interact with each other. As a biologist, it's always great to explore what happens when a cell cannot carry out normal functions. In the case of progeria, we see the downstream effects of cells not being able to replicate their DNA and continue the cell division process. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed learning about this genetic disease. Now you can test your knowledge of progeria in our pop quiz. Our first question is, name one physical and one physiological feature of progeria. One possible answer would be thin wrinkled skin with visible veins and progressive heart and blood vessel disease. Our second question is, through what process can one gene create multiple types of proteins? If your answer was alternative splicing, you are correct. By using different combinations of the gene's exons, the cell is able to create multiple protein types from the same gene. Here's another question. True or false? The common C to T mutation in the LMNA gene leads to a protein called progelatin. False. Normal copies of the LMNA gene create the lamin protein, but this mutation creates a protein called progerin. Our last question is, when cells age, they enter a stage called senescence. Remember that senescence occurs when a cell stops dividing. This process leads to premature aging because new cells are not replacing old cells. If you'd like to know more about what it's like to live with progeria, check out the links found in this video.